Howdy, this is Matt from Jackersburg and Co. Today's project, Tex Malt Smash. So in this uh, collaboration video with Tex Malt, I was fortunate enough to be uh, connected with Billy and uh, he got me some grain to run a little experiment here on one of their malts. Uh, it's pretty exciting. So the malt that I was able to get was the Wildfire Pell Malt. Uh, of course, it being a smash, it's 100% of that. Uh, we started off brew day together. He came over, and uh, as per usual, we started with the RO water. I uh, shot for the yellow balance profile for this. I was trying to aim for something in that like pale ale uh, line of thought. Not quite IPA. Um, the hops I chose was Saws, and uh, we'll get to that in a minute. So our starting gravity for this was 1.050. Our finishing gravity was 1.012 for an ABV of 4.95%. Uh, you know, I wanted something that was pretty easy to drink. I didn't want something highly alcoholic uh, to, to, to go up against this. I was looking for something that was going to be kind of just a nice drinking beer where you could taste the malt, you could taste the hops, you could smell the malt, you could smell the hops, and uh, I thought, you know, something right around the 5% would be a pretty good uh, shot at that. So for the hops, as again, uh, I chose uh, saws. I, I gathered up a couple different saws. I had some that had been sitting in the freezer for just a little bit, and then uh, I, I grabbed quite a few packets and went to the homebrew store. Uh, but there was a couple different uh, alpha acid levels. There was a 3.4% and then 3.2. Uh, so we started off with two ounces at 60 minutes of the 3.4s for uh, 23.7% and then at 30 minutes we used another 3.4 alpha acid for 9.1% uh, alpha acids or IBUs sorry for IBUs and then for uh, the 30 minute edition we have here. That's when the 3.2 alpha acids came in for a total of 4.3% IBUs. And then at the last five minutes of the boil, I used the other half an ounce of the 3.2 alpha acids for 1.1 IBUs. Uh, total IBU count for this thing is uh, pretty big at 38.2%. 38.2 IBUs. I I thought that that was a little on the heavy side, but with those low percentages, I thought maybe it would uh, even out. I was really trying to chase the Saul's character too in this beer. I've kind of learned that I quite enjoy Saul's, so I wanted to see what it would do in a a smash beer. I know it pairs pretty well with uh, like East King Goldings and a, a few other hops, but you know, I figured what the heck if it turns into a little bit more IPA range, maybe we'll really kind of discover those those characteristics of this hop and then uh, be able to see if we appreciate it more, appreciate it less, or if there's anything else uh, that we can do to it. Um, so the other boil additions real quick were, were that we used the Warflock tablet at the 15 minute mark and then uh, yeast nutrient at the 10 minute mark. As is the standard procedure for most brews around here, we no chilled it and then we transferred it to the fermenter. Uh, we pitched uh, USO5 for the yeast. Um, I wanted something that was going to be fairly neutral on this. I didn't want a lot of yeast uh, expression. I know sometimes people can pick up like peach and other characteristics out of USO5 if it's fermented, you know, the warmer temperatures or room temperature. 
I felt pretty safe with it, uh, with, with at room temperature, 72 degrees around here. Um, I've used USO 5 at that temperature before. I've never really picked up on it. And while I'm still trying to learn and develop the palette uh, to help, you know, get those good descriptors and things like that, um, like I said, I felt pretty safe with it uh, at room temperature. So, so with that being said, let's take a look at this. Now I have snuck a few of these beers uh, periodically while uh, tasting things, and uh, a few of these things have kind of turned out to be a little over carbonated. This thing set in the fermenter for about three weeks to a month, uh, and then I transferred and bottled it after it hit uh, thermal gravity. As you can see, pretty big carbonation, definitely over carved. So uh, while we wait for that to die down, uh, the last time that I had one of these was about a week ago, and put that over here for a minute. So the last last time that I had one of these was probably about a week ago. Uh, I just took some some quick notes. So for the aroma, I kind of picked up a little bit on the breadiness and uh, kind of like the, the crust uh, of, of a bread. Um, and then it rolls into a little bit of a citrus uh, type aroma. And then I start to pick up kind of like a, like a wood uh, smell, maybe kind of more like earthiness or something like that. And then so for the... Uh, Flavors that I have noted before on this, um, I get hints of the the malt and the bread that pop through. Um, I think with the being highly carbonated, we're gonna have a lot more expressions of some of these things. Maybe they're kind of amped up to where if it was a little lower carbonation, it wouldn't be quite as pop with the aromas and the mouthfeels and flavors. But, uh, so I, I had the hints of the, the, the malt and the breadiness uh, pop through, and then again that citrus uh, for the flavor, and then it moves into kind of like that earthiness, spiciness uh, realms. So I don't really know that the yeast contributed much to the earthiness and the uh, spiciness that, that, that I was getting. I would think that that would be more from uh, the hops and the sauce, uh, maybe a little bit of the malt, but I don't think uh, it really was contributed from there. So I had also noticed, uh, noted with uh, the mouthfeel that it felt like it was kind of medium to medium high. Again, the over carbonation probably pushes that through a little bit. Um, it's, for sure high carbonation and maybe some of that carbonation bite was some of that contributing to like the spiciness uh, for the flavors um, so that's about it that's all I pretty much noted before carbonation goes, I used uh, about 4.5 ounces of powdered sugar for this thing. Um, I guess where I had moved it in the being room temperature, I don't think that there was a big fluctuation in, in temperature or anything, so I don't know why it decided to get like that. Um, 
I've experienced this with uh, high head quiet where it gets utter carbonated to the point where it's bottle bombs. Um, I haven't had any of that with this, at least not yet. So I feel pretty good about it. Um, but I guess let's try to see what we pick up. So, for the aroma, I definitely picked up on a little bit of that, like, breadiness and, again, a little bit of that crust, crust, like, bread, like, just that smell that's released when you cut into some fresh bread, like, right out of the oven when it's still warm, um, and then it kind of rolls into a little bit of that citrus smell almost immediately. get a little bit of the the wood smell that I was talking about like um, after you've you've cut down cut into some some limbs and things like that smells smells really good I really love the smell of this beer just keep playing this game here So as the flavor goes, it feels like the, the malt still just barely peeks through on that like citrus uh, thing. The citrus seems to have kind of taken over a little bit more, at least this week. Um, and maybe that's the carbonation still kind of building up a little bit. It's really pushing that citrus through um, and then it moves into a little bit of the spiciness and earthiness uh, aspects um, it's pretty good um, I feel like maybe it's a little bit hop forward uh, for my taste uh, I think we're kind of treading IPA territories kind of interesting it's right now that one um, that sip kind of had it almost a sweet bread type finish at the very end it's pretty pretty interesting so all in all set aside other than the fact that it's over carbonated. Um, I'm pretty happy with it. I think it's a great, clear, clean looking beer. Still got a little bit of chill haze, but it seems to be clear up. I think, uh, I think we can for sure say that this thing has a lot of the saws characteristics to it. Um, I kind of hate that the, it's as hot forward as it is. I really wish that uh, maybe I would have backed down a little bit on those hops to where we could get a little bit more expert, uh, expression from the malt. So maybe it'll be fun again to take another attempt at it and we'll try another hop. But uh, with all that said, man, this is a good beer. Um, hopefully you try something else out like this. Hopefully you take a look at uh, the Tex Malt uh, malts. Uh, they seem to be pretty good. I've got a few other projects with them coming up here pretty soon. So that's going to be uh, a fun 
little uh, venture on some of this stuff. Uh, they, they're they're kind of excited about some of the things that I'm, I'm fixing to attend. So, with all that said, thanks for stopping by. Really appreciate it. Go check out Text Malt. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to this channel. Uh, like, comment, share. Um, let me know if you have any suggestions of what you felt like would have made this beer any better after everything that I've talked about it. Bye.